All right, y'all, what's going on? It's Combo Breaker 99 back with another video. All right, y'all, so as y'all know, a few few people asked me this question a couple of weeks ago, and I just wanted to pull this segment from the live stream I did a couple of weeks ago because um, I just wanted to go ahead and put the video out just in case you don't want to scroll through the actual live stream. But I wanted to talk about some of the things with the changes in WMMA and where it stands anyways and the current state of this division. But um, the question was, can the Bantamweight division get back to where it was? And by where it was, meaning can it return to the top of the charts like it was back in 2015 so uh, like i said um when that question was asked i already thought to myself i think the question is more so can 135 get back on his feet because with the state that it's in right now that's the bit that's been the question i've been asking myself for a while right now you know i was like wow like this division really on the downside man like when's it going to get back on his feet at this point like i wasn't even thinking about like when it first you know hit the ufc and you know it was just like at the top of the charts right because really getting it back to where it was, the premier division of WMMA, I don't think it'll happen the same way when the times are changed. You know, when the division first hit, it was brand new for the fans and casual fans. You know, women, you know, women, they were already fighting, but it were it really wasn't on the map until the UFC started the, the division. So the fans, they were really intrigued and they wanted to see what this was all about at the time. You know, it was like, oh, OK, women on this level, like they fighting alongside the men. You know, I got to see what this is like, especially when bringing in the women involved the star everybody wanted to see ronda rousey right ronda rousey in the division at the time was really what put the division and the sport over the top you know we can't lie about that like me i'm a i'm a hardcore fan i was loving the fight game before you know the ufc actually signed a bantamweight division or made the bantamweight division and ronda rousey but i was one that always enjoyed it but when they brought her in it brought the sport over the top it brought in more fans it put it in a place that was never seen before because of the star element and that's not just the fights right it was a mix of fans that were coming to see the fight game but it was a lot of people coming to see her so with the big help of a fighter with star power and something new you know that's something new element it made 135 the top division for women right but since the downfall of uh, rousey you know the bantamweight division it hasn't been the same in the entertainment since you know it it's had its stars like holly Holm, who dethroned ronda rousey but home she could never keep that untouchable aura like that you know she's more so light you know a lot of people like her she's more so light than carrying that great skill or you know that superb special specialty and you know carrying that undefeated aura right you know she's just not that type of fighter but she still has a lot of casual fans that come to see her because of her personality and her look right let's be real because she still got some main events because she still has a heavy fan base that comes just just to see her you know those those casual fans like that but when it comes down to it, even then, those casual fans, they want something extra. They want something extra. You know, they, they want that arrogance. They want those exciting wins that come with it. You know, home, she just wasn't she just wasn't bringing that because, you know, she hadn't put together like a string of really, really exciting wins or great performances, you know, since that Ronda Rousey win, right? You know, since then, you know, it's just been like a couple of wins here, there, here and there, but like the elite level fighters she would always lose to, right? So you look at that. That kind of brings it down. Then, of course, you had champions. You, you know, you had champions and other fighters that helped the division, of course, like Nunez, Tate, Pena, GDR, and Shevchenko, of course. You know, they brought in more of the skill element. They definitely helped keep it together, right, 100%. But, you know, when the division had that talent still going, it made it exciting, more so if you're just a martial arts fan, right? And honestly, that's the standard where I look to hold the division now, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. You know, that's the division. That's the standard I hold the division to now. But and, and I want to see it reach. But now that all of the matches have been made and most of the fighters are out of their prime, you know, the, the division is kind of at a at a dry point right now. Right. And that happens sometimes, you know, great, great things don't last forever in the sport. You know, so for me, I don't think that the division reaches that Ronda Rousey era ever again, getting back to the Nunes era. It's going to be tough enough, but that's the standard where I think is more so reachable. You know, I think the fans, they first have to realize that, that the Ronda Rousey thing, that's gone. Like getting it to the top of the charts, that that, that era is gone because 
she pretty much carried that era in and she brought in all those fans that, you know, wanted to see it. And of course, like I said, there's that crop of fans that want to see how good women can be in MMA at the time. Right. So they'll they'll kind of come and go. But the Ronda fans, they'll definitely come and go because when they don't see her anymore, they're not going to be there anymore. You know, if they want to see regular fights. They'll say, oh, I just want to see the men fight then. Right. So whether or not you bring up a Tate, GDR or Sevchenko to them, they, they really don't want to see that. But if you have those type of fighters in the division, hardcore fans will tune in like myself and, you know, everybody on this channel for the most part, you know, and just the majority of the fans like that just love sports or love martial arts. They love the sport of MMA. You know, they'll they'll still tune in. Right. But like I was saying, now that even that element is kind of gone, the division's at a dry point. So that's why I say the question to me is, can it get back on its feet? Because that part of the division is already gone with Nunez retired and a lot of the other fighters out of their prime. You know, we can't even think about the Ronda era anymore. Right. Because that's been done. But now the element of just talented fighters and great matches, that's gone right now. That That's where we're at. Right. That's that's where, you know, we're trying to get it back to. You know, so now we're at this dry point. But like I said, that happens sometimes, you know. But I think the first thing the fans they have to realize is like some of y'all that ask this question is the days of Ronda Rousey are gone. The days of Ronda Rousey are gone, all right? WMMA and MMA is still a bit new, you know, when you compare it to sports, combat sports like boxing, but it's been around long enough to evolve, right? And whenever a sport evolves, you know what they say, man, you got to keep up. So at that time, to see women fighting on a big platform, it was crazy. But when you had a woman like Ronda Rousey in there at the time, when it's growing, you know, she was a dominant specialist. She was arrogant. Dana White, he had to sign her because he knew that this was going to bring in fans and money. Right. The division they had a lot of good fighters, though. You know, it had a lot of good fighters, but she was the one everyone was coming to see. You know, but as the division started to change and evolve, she couldn't keep up. Right. She couldn't keep up and she lost. It's like, you know, upgrades to computers, you know, people who make a certain program like they have to keep it. They have to keep updating it because. Other programmers and other, you know, developers that they're watching what you're doing and they're watching the mistakes that you make. So they're like, OK, I know what to do here. Like his program is like this. Well, I'm going to make it a little bit better. And when they make their brand, other people are going to start eyeing theirs and say, oh, his loads faster. I like this program. Let me go over here. In the meantime, when you're getting frustrated and you're not like keeping up and evolving, you're going to start falling. Right. You're going to start falling. It's like I said, too, like arcades like like back in the 80s and 90s like arcades were the thing right arcades you know they they were where everybody used to go they were the it spot because that's where you get your best graphics you used to go in there play the best games best fighting games all of that right that's where all the kids used to be back in the day right but as time went on home consoles they started to take over because you had better graphics at home now you know you could pay just one big price for you know uh, a console and then have to worry about going to play these quarter munchers where you have to, you know, play at a certain limited time. Then you have to go home. But now you can stay home at all all day and all night. Right. So when you buy these systems, that's it. Right. That That's kind of it. So arcades, there was really no way for them to keep up. They couldn't really evolve. I mean, there's probably something they could have done. But whenever you start making things a little bit more convenient or you just evolve, you have to keep up or you just get pushed out. And that's why arcades, you know, they just got played out, you know. So it's kind of similar to that. But I say it's more like, you know, computer programmers when you got upgrades, if you don't evolve with the times, and you just keep sticking to doing the same thing. You know, you're going to get pushed out of there. Right. And that's kind of how it was for Ronda Rousey. You know, she just got in at the right time while the while the division was brand new and nobody was with her until they started watching and they started evolving. Right. But after she left the game, you know, the game turned into something more. To me, it did. You know, I think the, the pace slowed down as far as like star power. But with the fighters evolving and becoming more well-rounded, it, to me, it was more entertaining. You know, fans got to focus more in on like not just like entertainment, but also skills. And that's where Nunez and the Bullet, they came in. Right. Fighters like that, GDR and so on. So really getting back to the Ronda State is something we can forget now and just focus on talent. Another reason, I, like I say, forget that. Just focus on talent because now you're getting well-rounded fighters. The game is going to change because right now we don't even have anyone that can duplicate the Nunez era. And that takes time and growth. 
you know, that takes time and growth for that. You know, a lot of people don't understand Nunez put in a lot of work. People just remember Nunez for knocking out Ronda Rousey, but this girl was putting in work on the underground. She earned that GOAT tag. You know, before the UFC, she fought a lot of good fighters. Ida and Gomez and, um, you know, fighters that she had lost to, Kaz and Gano before, you know, before the, um, you know, before the, the transition to the fighter she became. And, and, you know, a lot of the contenders in the Bantamweight division, they had to grow too. You know, they, they had an underground record. You know, even Misha Tate, like I remember watching her first fight when she got knocked out by Caitlin Young, you know, and then she just changed into a whole different champion. Like her and Caitlin Young, they went two different paths. You know, Misha Tate actually touched the belt. She's got, she got signed to the UFC, you know? So yeah, the, the, the division is in a dry spell, but it's going through a transition. You know, we got the fighters on one side that, that peaked already. You know, the fighters on this side, they already peaked. They're out of their prime. Then the newcomers that still need to prove themselves on one. There's, there's no in between right now from what I, what, what I can see, you know, which is going to make it harder. But that's just how it goes. It's like the heavyweight division back in 2005. You know, the heavyweight division back in 2005, right after Lennox Lewis retired in 2003, 2004 on it was just going through this like dry spell. Like you had Vladimir Klitschko, who was a good champion, but who was he fighting at the time? Like there was no great American heavyweights at the time. You know, there was just some guys that could fight, hold a title for one title defense, then they would lose it to Klitschko. And then the Eastern European heavyweights started taking over. And you know how that is. Like there's a lot of heavy, you know, heavyweight boxing is an American sport. You know what I mean? It's an American sport. It used to be like top sport up there with baseball way back in the day, right? So um, when it got to that period, when the Eastern Europeans were taking over, a lot of Americans were like, I can't pronounce these guys' name, or Bragimov, Klitschko, who, who, Vladimir Klitschko, who are these guys? You know what I mean? So when that started happening, everybody started pu getting pushed away from boxing. And, and, and you know, also they, the fights weren't that entertaining because, you know, Klitschko was just beating everybody with just a jab and grab type of style. You know, the entertainment value was gone. The talent was kind of gone. So there was that dry spill. It had to go through a transition till. You know, you could find more heavyweights in America and so on that people could get behind. So that's just when that's just how it is. Sometimes, you know, there's that period where you got newcomers and then the out of prime fighters. Right. There's no in between. See, with 125 now, we have prospects who can weed out the old heads. Right. We have prospects who can weed out the old heads. It's, it's been harder with band weights because it seems like the skill gap is wider, like what it was with the heavyweight division. You know, 135 needs to close that gap first before we see any group of fighters rise up to the top that's why i haven't picked like a triple threat for bantamweight yet you know we need like a group of fighters that can take over the top 10 uh, we got some fighters that got signed that looked exciting but they got to start retiring some of these post ronda post nunez fighters you know they got to start retiring them right so yeah i think the bantamweight division it can make it excite they can make exciting fights but getting back to the level where it used to be is gone getting it to the level of 125's popularity is going to be hard too until we see some more new sign fighters show up and show some promise and skills and dominance all right and another thing that's slowing the division that down right now i think that's pissing a lot of people off is the lack of urgency with scheduling this title fight all right i think that's what's pissing a lot of people off too that's not helping either because it's not keeping it moving it's not getting these other girls that want to go ahead and fight for the title you know they're you know it's not it's not getting their uh their career out the door either you know what i mean it's not getting to them where they want to be and out the door because you got pena rocky and mbs to choose from just make the fight just just make a fight to keep the, the, the division going you know i know silva she's she's one that we can consider that is a newcomer she's definitely a newcomer and new blood to the division but she you know she has a little life but she already got some of that controversy behind her name so we'll see what happens with her but in the meantime you can make pena versus rocky they ready to go you know go ahead and make this fight schedule so the division can keep on going and put some other the other girls on the undercard right so that's another thing that's kind of been making people think okay this this division's dead they, they're not doing anything with it right so yeah the division itself 135 to me is not dead it's dry but it needs some work ASAP. No Ronda could come in. No, no Ronda can come through right now and save it. No Ronda can come through and save it right now. It's, it's in need of new talent, a whole cast like 125. You know, see, 125 right now is a team effort from all the flyways. That's what makes that division exciting right now. Because, you know, when you look at Manone, Tyler, Aaron, 
um, Macy Barber, of course, Valentina and Grasso. It's a team effort from all of these girls. It's a whole cast where everybody has their favorite fighter right now. It's not everybody coming to see Ronda. It's everybody's coming to see these girls, right? These eight, nine, ten girls coming to fight the Silver Girls, right? All of these fighters, you know, even under under the underground fighters, like the unranked fighters, everybody's coming to see all of these fighters as a whole. So I think that's what Bantamweight needs to shoot for. You know, Bantamweight needs to shoot for um, the UFC needs to shoot for signing girls that can put the whole cast together, you know, put a whole great cast together, you know, like Liz Boa, Dixon, the Russian Ronda, you know, those girls, I, I think that once you add more to it and sign more, like Cavalcanti, who just got signed, it's going to become more of like a team effort from all of them, right? So the days of a Ronda are gone. You just got to seek like a good, talented, skillful division like 125. Um, I also say this before I go, I'll say three things that can pick 135 back up. Number one, weed out the old fighters, weed out the old fighters, like how flyweight is doing, you know, get the Andrea Lees and Lauren Murphy's and then fighters out. Right. So in this, this case, you know, go ahead and get the Ketlin Vieira's out, Irene Aldana's, you know, get all of them fighters out. That's, that's talking to the newcomers, get all them fighters out and, you know, just keep it moving like that. And you'll transition new fighters in. Number two, I'll say is focus on signing dedicated bantamweights, not just featherweights that move down. Because when you do that, these girls that come in as featherweights, you know, they're going to have trouble making weight, of course. Right. You know, some of them are going to be missing weight. It's always going to be like a 140 fight or a catch weight fight. You know, shout out to girls like Chelsea Chandler that want to fight, but they are natural featherweights. So put them girls in the featherweight division where they need to be. But um, sign girls that are strictly for 135 not girls that say oh i'm banning weight but i can squeeze down since it's the ufc and after that in the first couple of fights they start passing out missing weight and then we'd have no structure for banning weight again right so sign girls strictly to 135 and last but not least let time run its course let time run its course that's what we had to do with 2005's heavyweight division you know let clitch go run his course eventually somebody like deontay wilder anthony josh with tyson fury will come through and you know um crash through and they'll take those belts and they'll bring in some character they'll bring in some life you know from from around the world around the way so i think 135 just has to do that you know let these fighters that um are at the top run their course get up out move on sign a bellator retire or whatever you know but just keep moving to bantamweight girls that really want to fight for bantamweight let them keep on um you know just keep signing those girls let keep let them keep on coming in right so stop for looking for Ronda or Nunez. Let's just hope that we can get a talent-heavy division, a talent-heavy bantamweight division, just like 115 or 125 at this point. All right? And that's it, guys. I just wanted to drop that whole segment for y'all because there was a couple of things I wanted to add in there uh, for some of y'all to ask these questions. But, you know, I like when y'all ask me these questions. I'll just come through and do a quick discussion or a long discussion like this, you know. So, yeah, guys, that's what it is for me. 135, I think it'll come back, but it'll take a few years. But until then, 125 is keeping me happy, guys. Combo Breaker 99, I'm out. Subscribe, peace.